Canada. Canada is a country of diverse landscapes, industries, and people. Located in the northern part of the North American continent, Canada has oceans on three sides. It faces the Atlantic Ocean in the east and the Pacific Ocean in the west. In the north, Canada faces the cold waters of the Arctic Ocean. It has the longest coastline of any country in the world. In the south, Canada shares a border with the United States, which is 8,891 kilometers long. The country's total area is 9,984,670 square kilometers. But it is not one piece of land. In fact, more than 52,000 islands contribute to Canada's size. Canada's islands have been categorized into major and minor islands. Major islands have a total land size that is larger than 130 square kilometers. Minor islands are those considered smaller than that. There are a total of 146 major islands, but not all are lived on. Actually, very few of the islands in Canada have people living on them. One major reason for this is that more than 36,500 of these islands are in the far north. The area is known as the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. It has one of the world's coldest and most severe environments. The area is mostly home to polar bears, seals, and other wildlife. However, a small number of people live in various places in the southern parts of this region. Canada's landscape is made up of large flat plains, high mountain ranges, rivers, and lakes. The highest peak is Mount Logan. It is part of the St. Elias Mountains in the Yukon Territory. A geographical area known as the Canadian Shield is home to some of the world's oldest rocks. Some date back as far as 4.5 billion years ago. There are also thousands of freshwater lakes found in the area of the Canadian Shield. They were formed many centuries ago by the weight of ancient glaciers. As the glaciers slowly moved, they created depressions in the rock, which filled with water over time. Canada is thought to have around 50% of the world's lakes. These lakes are also thought to contain one of the world's largest supplies of renewable fresh water. Canada's climate changes from one extreme to another across the country. In the south, they have hot summers that are humid in some areas. There is also low rainfall and cold winters. In the north and northwest, they have very cold winters and short, cool summers. Even in the summer months, the temperatures in these areas only average around 17 degrees Celsius. People living there also have to deal with almost 24 hours of sunshine during part of the summer. Except for people living in the southern part of British Columbia, one climate fact unites most Canadians. They all face average temperatures of below freezing and continuous snow in winter. With these conditions and varying landscapes in mind, it is easy to understand why around 75% of Canada's population lives within 160 kilometers of the U.S. border. When you consider that Canada's total population is about 33 million, you can imagine how crowded some of the cities must be. However, when you compare Canada's total size to its actual population, It is one of the least populated countries in the world. Today, Canada is separated into 10 provinces and 3 territories, but it took a long time to develop into its modern state. The indigenous people of Canada are thought to have been some of the first to live there. They have been there for thousands of years. These indigenous groups are the Inuit people and the different groups of native Indians. These groups of native Indians are now referred to as First Nations.
The first Europeans to arrive in Canada are thought to have been Vikings. Evidence of a settlement in Newfoundland dating from the 10th century has been found. Then, in 1497, an Italian navigator, known as John Cabot in English, arrived. He sailed from Bristol in England to the east coast of what we now call Canada. It wasn't until the early 17th century, though, that both Britain and France established colonies in Canada and settlement began. The first of these were in the areas known today as Quebec, Newfoundland, and Labrador. These two powerful countries fought many wars with each other in order to gain total control of Canada. France lost many of these battles and eventually handed over power of most of its settlements to Britain. As the different settlements within Canada grew, a more formal and local system of government was established. This, of course, was based on the systems used in Britain, with the power remaining in the hands of the British government. One of the early developments that led to modern-day Canada was in 1840. The British government passed a law that united Upper and Lower Canada into the province of Canada. Upper Canada was mostly English-speaking, and Lower Canada was mostly French-speaking. The province of Canada was later separated into the provinces of Ontario and Quebec. The next major development occurred on July 1, 1867, when the British government passed a new law that established Canada as a dominion. The official name given was the Dominion of Canada. This meant that Canada became a self-governing colony with its own parliament and provincial assemblies. New tax systems and laws could now be created in Canada. However, the final authority was still the British government, because all new legislation had to be approved by them. The first four provinces to join under this law were Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. Many more changes occurred over the years as Canada moved toward complete independence. In 1931, a new law by the British Parliament stated that all the dominions of the British Empire were no longer colonies. The word dominion was removed from Canada's official name, and more power was given to the Canadian government. Some people saw this new law as the birth of a nation. What it actually meant was that Canada no longer had to get official approval for new legislation from the British government. It also meant British laws no longer applied in Canada. However, the final step toward complete independence for Canada did not come for another 51 years. In 1982, Britain passed its final law with respect to Canada. With that, British control over Canada ended. Canada has remained a member of the Commonwealth of Nations and still has the monarch of England as its head of state. Although over the centuries the French government had lost control of its colonies in Canada, the local French people were able to keep their connection with their heritage. Laws were made by the British government that protected their educational and civil law rights as well as the use of French. This influence is still seen today, with Canada having both French and English as its official languages. You can see French and English signs, packages, and documents all over Canada, but only some areas are considered to be truly bilingual. Such areas as Quebec, Ottawa, and New Brunswick are good examples of this. As Canada grew into a multicultural society, different cultural influences also had an effect on the number of languages spoken. Recent research shows that English is the first language for more than half of the population, but that almost one-fifth of all Canadians say their first language is neither French nor English. 
In fact, more than 15 different European and Asian languages are listed in census reports. Also, an estimated 50 different languages are spoken by the various indigenous groups. The province of Ontario is located in the southeastern area of Canada. It is home to two important cities. The first is Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. The second is Toronto, which is not only the capital city for the province of Ontario, but also Canada's largest city. Ottawa began life as the capital in 1857 when it was chosen by Queen Victoria. There are several interesting stories about how it was chosen. One suggests that the Queen liked watercolors she had seen of the area, while another says she closed her eyes and randomly pointed to a place on the map. The truth, however, shows that Ottawa was chosen for very particular reasons. The first was that it was on the border of Upper and Lower Canada, with a mixed population of both English and French-speaking people. The second was that it could be reached by land and water, and was in a position that would be easy to defend. And the third was that the government already owned a large piece of land there. Ottawa has grown into a major center for high-tech companies dealing with all areas of computer and information technology. It is estimated that more than 1,500 advanced technology companies have offices in Ottawa. Toronto has grown into Canada's biggest metropolitan area and is a major financial and commercial center. It is also home to the CN Tower, which is a symbol of the city. It was the world's tallest freestanding structure made by man for many years. Toronto is a very multicultural city, with many different neighborhoods. You can feel as if you are passing from one country to another when you make your way through the neighborhoods. Areas such as Little Poland, Greek Town, and Portugal Village are just a few examples. Restaurants offering authentic food, specialty shops, and sometimes architecture are what help to create the atmosphere of another country. Examples of multiculturalism like this can be found all over Canada. Canada has many different industries that support its economy. Forestry, agriculture, and mining are key ones. Forestry is made up of several main areas. One area is lumber, wood, and building products. Another is the pulp and paper sector. Forestry is one of the largest industries in Canada. It also accounts for more than 20% of world trade in forest products. Canada exports to more than 100 countries. These facts are quite impressive when you consider that almost half of Canada is covered with forest, yet only a small portion is cut down by the industry each year. The agriculture and food industries are vital to Canada's economy. Major areas of production are grain and fruit and vegetable, even though less than one-twelfth of Canada's land is suitable for growing crops. There is also dairy farming and livestock, as well as food and beverage production. These two industries combined are one of Canada's largest employers. Canada's natural environment provides the base for its mining industry. Around 80% of the minerals and metals produced are exported. Canada is considered one of the world leaders in the production of minerals such as uranium, zinc, and nickel. It is also a major producer of iron ore, which has led to the development of a substantial steel industry. There are many other major industries that have an impact on Canada's economy. Tourism and connected service industries, such as hotels and restaurants, make up one of the important domestic industries. During the first six months of 2007 alone, 
Canada had 7.3 million international visitors. Canada's multicultural cities and reputation for being a safe country to visit are factors that attract these visitors. However, Canada's biggest attraction is its amazing landscapes, which include mountain ranges and extreme environments. It is a paradise for nature lovers. The establishment of national parks more than 100 years ago is one of the main influences behind the protection of Canada's environment. The first of more than 40 national parks in Canada was Banff National Park. It was established in 1885 and has become world famous for its hot springs and breathtaking scenery, especially the Canadian Rockies. Wood Buffalo National Park is Canada's largest park. It was set up in 1922 to protect the remaining free-roaming bison in Canada. Another major tourist attraction is Niagara Falls. It stretches across the border between the province of Ontario in Canada and the state of New York in the United States. Niagara Falls is made up of three sections that are separated by two different islands. The Canadian part is known as Horseshoe Falls. Around 168,000 cubic meters of water falls over the top of Niagara Falls every minute during the tourist season. This amount of water flows down from the Niagara River, which has become an important source of hydropower generation. During the evening and non-tourist season, water is diverted to the hydropower stations. This means that the amount of water that flows over the falls is reduced to approximately 85,000 cubic meters every minute. There are many other interesting places in Canada. In fact, by world standards, Canada is considered a great place to live with Canadians having one of the highest standards of living in the world.